for him. I personally been praying for him and the stuff that they're going through and what a what a rock he's been for this president, huh? Has he been a, he's just been a real rock. It's kind of hard to criticize him with any actual criticism. So um, let me see here. Justin, you feel like starting us off with a word of prayer? Oh, great. Thank you. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, we come before you just to thank you for allowing us to be here today. Lord, I am. Thank you for allowing us to come into a fellowship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey, amen. <coughs> so, we're going to pray for our first responders, pray for our president, our vice president. Pray for those of that those that are in charge of us, whether we like them or not. God has put them there in a role, and we need to pray for them to do a better job. I'm sure you've seen that sign. If uh, if you're praying for another pastor, why don't you try to pray for the one you got? Well, if we're praying for another president, why don't we try to pray for the president we got, the governors we got, the mayors we got, everything in general? We put them there. No, God put them there, and they're there for a reason. Could be for a lesson for us. So anyway, so we lift each and every one of them up in prayer. Uh, I need someone to start us off on the first list on the left. There you go. Romero, Miguel, Robert Hernandez, Ryan Spring, Mark Nolan, Nathan Costello, Gabe West, Mary Thomas, Daniel Walker, Chris Rummage, Harley Thompson, Daniel Family, J.C. Costello, Andrew King, Colton, Lucina, Kim Vincent, Morgan Kovac, Russell Haber, Chris Reyes, and Ken Vigil. All right. How about that middle list? Can someone pick up? There you go. Nick Early, Gary Rice, Jay Solis, Eddie Cervantes, Michael Wiley, Dean Reynolds, Robert Mason, Justin Cass, Carson Carter, Richard Thibodeau, Joseph Joseph. Jose Sanchez, Christina Sapp, John Nico, Amanda Vinzel, Casey Carter, Andrew Gonzalez, Anthony Davis, and Veronica Dizzle. All right, last list on the right. Anybody help us with that one? There you go, ma'am. Jessica Williams, Daniel Hewitt, Jerry Tovar, Charlene Cummings, Molten Family, Matt Dickinson, Polly, uh, Paula Williams, Kalisa Peterson, Ava Christian Berry, Ken Warnett, Alicia Dunn, Joshua Paris, Paris, Monica Castillo, Addie Reynolds, Texas State Stafford, Deborah Spivey, April Menzel, Ashley McCargill, Jessica Benson. Okay. Now, Miss Wendy, if y'all haven't heard me say this before, she is going to be calling through this list. And if we don't get an update or two every other month at least, we'll probably have to take those folks off the list. So, is there any updates you can give me on anybody on here? Well, Andrew and Christina still need help. Okay. They still need prayers. Alright. Anybody else? Uh, Mike, Deborah's five weeks left this year. Uh, and uh, she's got Parkinson's real bad. She's going down the hill real bad. So, yeah, she needs to stay on that. Okay. Alright. Well, is there anybody we can add to the list? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to add my friend Landon Dale. He's uh, um, into drugs and he really wants to get off. He doesn't know how to do it. And I talk to him every day if I read your Bible. And I tell him I'd come take him to church. So he really needs, he really wants some prayers. All right. And uh, anybody else? All right. Yes, ma'am. My nephew Stephen Green. Uh, he's really good in bad shape. Uh, he's been in prison five times, and he still keeps messing up. And he really needs our prayers. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody we take off of this? Okay. Uh, I, I personally want to want to make sure that we keep Tim Vincent, Morgan Kovath, and Jessica Vincent on there for exactly what it's there for, uh, spiritual warfare. All, all, all three. 
All right. I, I, I need someone to uh, lift this this list up, this uh, spiritual guidance list up in, in prayer, please. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight just to pray to your holy name. How we love you, Father, and we thank you that you've chosen to love us, that you chose to die for us, that you chose to forgive us. All how we love you, Father. And we pray that each one of us has the ability and the willingness to live our life based upon your foundation. Thank you for that, Father. And we lift up this prayer list to you, Lord, and praying especially for Lisa's friend who's trying to get off the of drugs, and praying especially for Lord, his brother, and Lord, we just thank you for hearing our prayer, and for knowing that you will act and with peace, <coughs> with healing, and we also know, Lord, that you're using these issues in these lives, just like you do in our community, to draw us closer to you to form a close relationship with him. Oh, we thank you, Father, for saying that. In Jesus, I will bless his name. Amen. 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 Thank you. So, uh, Wendy, uh, before I start this next list, do you have something to say about Mary I'm talking to? Do you want to tell us that? I don't know. Mary Dykeman is home, but Mary Dykeman has fourth stage cancer. Mary Dykeman has fourth stage cancer. She is at home. Is there been any kind of time or anything we can give? She's going to start radiation and start chemo. She'll be starting chemo and radiation both when they, when with a weekend out. The tumor out. They got the tumor out. But there's a lot of little spiders that are yeah. such an aggressive. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to keep Mary in our prayer. She's been a. She's on the list. Oh yes, she she she's been a, a, a shared time between here and and the church down the road for many years. <clears throat> so, okay, so we'll start this list off. I need someone to read the list on the left, starting off with Monica Rabellos. Okay, Monica Rabellos, Mary Dykeman, Mary Dykeman, Lord Biddle, Julie Johnson, Andrew Lavia, Charlotte Simmons, Jimmy Graff, uh, Jim Hanscape, Nicole Coleman, Kirk McBride, Raphael Alejandro, he's still going under treatment, James Green, Jocelyn Nautilus, whatever, Logan Garrett, Veronica Costello, Brad Ray. Okay. Last, last name is Nowatney. Okay, that, that last name is Nowatney. Nowatney. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I get someone to pick up? Neil, go ahead. Finish the list, Neil. All right. Sharon Starks, Jim Cootsey, Blake Eckerman, Mark Simpson, Maria Schaefer, Rob Messenger, Henry Luna, Patricia Brown, Sasa Gerald, John Miller, Juan Marnez. Uh, Raina Reagan, Jennifer Vasquez, Wanda Jansen, Michelle Garza, Bob Eckerman, Shannon Navarro, Gail Carlow, Carrie Beaver, Sherry Bray, Doug Deter, uh, Barbara Acquire, uh, Natalie, Wanda Kasem, Kasem, Larry Hanner, and Mary Dyke. There's Mary on that list. Well, so, so uh, the church has set up a meal train for Mary Dykeman, which just means if you want to sign up and, pre and prepare a meal, we'll give you a date you can prepare a meal for her. So little things like preparing a meal she doesn't have to worry about when she gets into that therapy. So if anybody's interested in signing up for that, and look, you might not have time for stuff. You could run up and get her a little box of chicken or something. You know, it, it, would it be for two or would it be for her? It'd be for two, right? So it, it'd be for her and Ashley McCarg. No pork, huh? No pork. Yeah, no pork. <laughs> All right. Well, um, who can we? Uh, does anybody want to discuss anybody on that list? 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son, Mark Simpson, had the biopsy on his cancer yesterday, and uh, he He's feeling great today. He said he wasn't feeling real good the day of the biopsy, but he's feeling okay. And the next step then is as soon as COVID allows, we will schedule some surgery. So I'd appreciate it when you keep him on. Absolutely. I'm not on that list, but I had a biopsy and they blotched it, so I got to have one of them. Okay. So I'm still waiting to be here. All right. Anybody we need to add to the list? John, it's for, uh, it, I think it's for help. It's uh, Judy Chesser having surgery on August 21st. Here, we'll add that on the other side. We'll, we'll, uh, she's writing down right now. John Hall? Johnny Hall, the baby. Oh, Johnny Hall. The baby went to my and, and how is that going? I haven't heard it anymore. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? Take anybody off or add anybody to it. We're done with that. One's too many. All right. So, um, uh, how about uh, someone praying for this list? I can make eye contact if he looks up at me. You want, you, want, you want to pray for this list? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Father God, we just uh, lift up these people to you that are in need of cancer. Lord, we just ask that you would touch them. We turn to the back side of the list. Pray for our family, friends, health, and community. And uh, Judy Chester was just added to the list via Facebook. So uh, she's going to have surgery on the, the that's it, it's 21st, 20. When was it done? The 21st. The 21st. 21st, okay. Okay, so we start out with Helen Fiddler and family. And we've mentioned her and Bill uh, had an accident yesterday. Brian Hogan. Glenn Fitzgerald, Sherry Taggart, Tim Taggart, Kathy and Tony Cavayan, Connie Pliant, Chris Flores, Faith's grandmother, Ellen Cooper, Addie Lahudney, La Matt La, La Cucumber, boy, these are some tough names, Glenda Hatter, Rex Fletcher, Gloria Rodriguez, Timothy Amaya, Alexis Bingham, Chelsea Craddock, Orville Johnson, Jim Boyd, Alice McHugh, Pam Hollingsworth, South Texas Pregnancy Center, Mike Gonzalez and family, Tristan, Cheryl Davis, Danny Reyes, Crystal Hanner, Marty Bobish, Bill Phillip, well, we can take Bill off the list. Del Gunn, he's uh, still without his eyesight and not much hope. But we still have God, and He's a mighty God. So continue Amen. to pray for Him. Laura Summers, David Summers, Deborah Phillips, Cecil Popham, Mr. and Mrs. Milstead, Patty Milstead, Melissa Slagle, Robert Slagle, and Robert Slagle back. Robert, that's both of you, right? No. no. Robert A. Slagle is my nephew, and he's been he's been battling something for months, and the doctors. Still haven't figured it out. Um, it's not COVID. He's been pet tested five times now because each time he has to go get x-rays or a procedure, they have to. So just keep him in your prayers that they figure out what's going on because he can't walk two blocks and he's out of breath. And I mean, he's not even 30 years old. So. Uh, Absolutely. 
And wasn't this Alexis right here that's eating with us? So she's doing good. Bingham, you can take her off. I would like to add Scott and Pam Massey and family. Now, who is that? Anybody know who that is? That is Jenny Holcomb's mom and dad. Okay, and they're used to be members of the church, but they moved up to Washington seven years ago. Three or three years before that, they moved down to Kingsville for a job, and now uh, they're back here in Seguin, and they're probably going to start coming back here. But I'd like to lift them up in prayer for just a couple of weeks. His family just had gotten back safely. They need to make one more trip up there, bring a few more things in another car. Uh, I forgot to call my brothers here at church to help them, help us un, unpack them and, and, and move them out of the U-Haul van. But Sherry helped yesterday and one of my men that worked for me and myself, and they had two boys help. So we got it done. Uh, luckily it wasn't hot, it was about 100 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in that every day. Yes, ma'am? Kathy and Tony could they Okay. Kathy. But again, if we could just lift up Pam and, and Scott Massey and and, uh, and family for just just for moving in and getting themselves straightened out. And if they plug themselves back in here at this church, then they're going to be tremendous assets. If they go back to another, if they go to another church closer to their home, which is over at Interstate 10 and 46. Of course, that's understandable. So anyway, uh, they're really good good folks. If you never got to meet them, they're really good folks. Okay, I'll tell you what, I want to, I want to, oh yes ma'am. I just wanted to report on my brother, Glenn Fitzgerald. He's out of the ICU now and is in a step-down unit. And the biggest challenge is that his wife can't be with him. Ah, yes. He's in there by himself. Yeah. All right. No one else to add or take off of it, right? All right, I'll go ahead and close this in a word of prayer. Father in heaven. Um, We've got folks on this spiritual list. We've got folks on a cancer list. It's just a real deadly list. And uh, the bereavement right now for Bill Fiddler. Uh, we include that family in all our prayers. But Lord, uh, on the back side of our prayer list, we, we've got this list of folks that belong to the church, to the community, just great assets to the area. Well, we lift each and every one of them up for whatever might be hurting whatever kind of operations they're waiting on or have had. Lord, uh, I've heard this prayer so many times. You are the great physician. You know, I believe you are not just the great physician, but the great creator. You've created these bodies as mixed up as what men think they know what they're doing. But Lord, we know you know all about our bodies. You know all about us before. The Bible says before we were born. So Lord, I, I, I do pray to you and I do lift each and every one of these folks up to you. I pray for salvations first. I, 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 I pray for spiritual guidance. I pray for healings, Lord. And I pray for care and love in your church, your bride. And I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know how interesting, and that's really kind of what a good teacher would do, is try to keep the subject I'm teaching interesting. Now, I did not say it's my job to keep God's word interesting. Okay, <laughs> God's going to do that, and, and I can't, I can't sway or nay that either way. So, we're going to run back over to verse three in chapter three. I'm not going to spend much time on this until I get where I stopped last week. So it's going to be a quick review. Okay. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment on uh, upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. So we've picked up, Naomi has given Ruth instructions on how to go propose for marriage. Essentially, that's what she's doing. What was the first thing he told her? she told her to do? Wash. Well, we, we want to be cleaned up before we go meet our future bride or, or husband, right? Um, and anoint themselves, he, he, the, she says. Anoint ourselves with an oil, a, a fragrance, something good smelling. And the raiment is new clothes, good clothes, clean clothes. Put something good on. You're fixing to go to a, a, a proposal. You don't want to think of those garden clothes and those field workers' clothes. 
And she says, but don't make thyself known unto the man until he hath done. Now, if you listened to me the week before, I told you, what is going on right here? He's not king of the harvest. He's head of the harvest of his area. That's true. But at, uh, the, the, the Levitical law said that every time that you have a set of crops come in for the season, we're going to have a feast. We're going to have a party. You see, we should know that. Remember I said that before? We should know that. Why should we know it? We should know it because we read the Levitical law. We've read our Bible. If you don't, well, I'm helping encourage you to do that right now. So again, I said we're going to go pretty quick because i got a lot of notes for that. We're going to skip through them. Verse 4. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down. And he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Okay, under the Mosaic law, Ruth is not only entitled to and has a right to claim Boaz as her kinsman's redeemer, but she must claim him. And not only that it is obvious to Boaz, that it is obvious uh, uh, Boaz wants to be her kinsman redeemer. Remember the process that is taking place uh, makes possible the coming of Jesus Christ to this earth to be born in Bethlehem. That process, because they're, they're in the genealogy of Jesus. So, so this process has to take place. For these events before us in the, uh, in the, in the book of Ruth are taking place in, Beth, in Bethlehem. This girl is going to obey her mother-in-law and there's nothing wrong with what she's being instructed to do, as we shall see. She was asked to claim him. She had not claimed him. Ruth is preparing to present herself to Boaz the proper way. As we read this story, we might ask, why would Ruth not take a different approach? Why lay at the feet of Boaz? Why uncover his feet and then ask him to put a corner of his mantle over you? You think there ought to be a better way? I mean, yeah. But, had Ruth used another approach? Remember, you're talking about a godly man here. You're talking about a man that knows the, the, the Levitical process. All right? Boaz would have been confused and the entire effort would have failed. Boaz knew the way he should be approached by his kin. All proper and clean. And Ruth did not disappoint him or herself or her God. The picture the Bible is painting is for us uh, is simple but proper. The Old Testament priests knew how to approach God. He gave them instructions in the law. New Testament Christians know how to approach God because in the Word He has told us what is required. Real quickly, in Hebrews chapter 10, 19 through 25, I have to go to this right here. I wasn't going to do it, but I have to. This is too important. Hebrews 10, starting in 19 through 25. Having therefore a brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with, from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Well, there's a washing going on there. Uh, I'll ask a couple questions in a minute. Let us hold fast. The profession of our faith without uh, without wavering, he for he is faithful, and that that is promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. I threw number five uh, twenty five in, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner is of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So that last verse has been used in many, 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 many a sermon. And all it's saying is, quit not visiting God's people in God's house. In other words, quit not coming to church. Start going to church. Get with the brethren. It's pretty much what it says. Not forsaking. All right. So, lost sinners, we come as uh, uh, you come as you are. I'm a sinner, but I'm not lost. Uh, but we must. But we as 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 a. Uh, as uh, uh, men and women of God, uh, we, we must conform to God's rules if we want fellowship with Christ and the Father with a true heart, hold fast, without wavering. Remember, we must worship in spirit and truth. Always consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. I just read that, didn't I? Provoke, push, pride, love, care, help, do. 
work for it, whatever it takes in love each time. Ruth going to the threshing floor and following a set of principles set forth to become part of the kinsman redeemer. This picture is the picture of you and I going to God and knowing by being taught how we must come. Okay? Now, a good Baptist set would say amen. All right? Now, look how I'm dressed today. Now, y'all see me except on Sunday mornings dressed just like this every time you see me. These are my work clothes, actually. They're clean, but I am wearing work clothes. God doesn't care about this. This raiment's not important to Him. But what's important to God is where I put my heart, my soul, and my mind as I come to Him in prayer, as I come to Him in request, as I come to Him in forgiveness and repentance. That's what's important to God. All right? So, still in verse 4, understanding the threshing floor is the throne of God. We must ask God to cover us with His mantle. Today, Jesus will do that for us. But like I said earlier, God is waiting. Yes, there are a few rules to follow. Symbolically, we wash ourselves. We confess our sins. We repent of our sins. God waits on us. We truthfully want to be under the wings of the Lord. God expects uh, us to accept all that He has plans for us and to obey Him completely. No reservations, just all in. That is the faith the writer in Hebrews is talking about through Jesus I just read about. He talked about through the, 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 the flesh. We're using the flesh of Jesus Christ now to get to the throne room of God. I want you to think about how, how just unbelievable that is. God sent His Son in the flesh for you and me. Today we worship in spirit. That man, God, <coughs> as Jesus Christ. There's some preaching going on right there that you just don't have any idea how hard it is for you just to just skip on by it and go into something else. All right, verse 5. Let me go back where I was. Verse 5 of uh, Ruth. I'm trying to get back in that habit of saying that completely. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest to me, I will do. So Ruth is saying, I'll follow these directions. And Ruth went down unto the floor and did according all that her mother had bade her to do, had asked her to do. Verse 7, And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Around midnight, uh, let, me, let me get back, And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid, and turned, him to, and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. Around midnight, Boaz was startled. The King James says afraid. Boaz looks down, and what is or who is this but a woman laying at his feet? So it's dark enough that he doesn't know who she is. She didn't say, hey, I'm getting under the mantle of, uh, of your apron, of your skirt here. It's Ruth. Don't kick me. Don't hit me or nothing. She, he, she did what was proper. Just snuck under the corner of his mantle. And I have to emphasize this. If you didn't hear me say this the other day, there's a movie called Ruth, and it's a fine movie. But at this particular juncture, in that movie, Sherry and I sat and watched, he's leaning up against the side, sleeping, and instead of her getting down there, she gets up next to him. And after he figures out who it is, he's got his arm around her, and they're kind of like cuddling. That's not how it happened. The Bible doesn't say nothing about that. We're going to finish this out. She stayed at his feet till morning. Can that be any more cool, proper, loving, following the rules? Just exactly how. Why did she lay in his feet? Well, because if she laid it, if she laid anywhere else, Boaz wouldn't understand what she's there for. That's what I read. See, the tradition is she gets under his feet. There's no sexual misconduct, and none to be had at his feet. That's why it's so important to say those words. All right? Clean, beautiful, loving, exactly as this proposal should be. Oh, I can add to that so much. Verse 9, and he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over mine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Well, she, he knows she, she's a near kinsman or himself. He, that's known. But now, she's put everything out. Not just, hey, I want to be laying at your feet. I'm a near kinsman. Alright? 
I'm requesting marriage proposal. That's what she's doing. And she's asking him to be her what? Use the word for me, someone. Absolutely, her redeemer. All right? The picture here is so dark, Boaz did not recognize Ruth. Who art thou? I am Ruth, your hand, sir, handmaid. Uh, spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a, I got my little a right here marked down, a near kinsman. Okay? You've got to be a near kinsman, but he's a, that, that's, now we know something else about to happen because there's more than one. All right? We know Boaz is second in line because we know the story. But she knows that too by saying, I'm a, not I'm your, I'm the, I'm your only, I'm a near kinsman. Do you know what Ruth is saying? I want you as my kinsman redeemer, and I want to tell you so. That really changed the thinking of Boaz. The picture here is we so to uh, uh, is we go to the feet of Jesus and ask for forgiveness. We must recognize we are sinners. We must want to repent. We want a new life in Christ. Now, there's no repentance for her, for her to him. That's not what's going on there. All right, uh, Ruth. Ruth did not come to Boaz Fields. Husband hunting. Now she is claiming Boaz as her kinsman redeemer. And it looks and sounds like he is not reluctant to act in that capacity. Ruth is doing it in such a beautiful fashion. Ruth could have taken Boaz to court. What? Remember when I started out about the Levitical laws back there in Leviticus 25? Y'all remember going over 28? We went over this. There's a set of rules to follow. There's a set of rules to follow if the near kinsman doesn't do his job. But you know what? Ruth loved Boaz. She didn't want nothing forced on him. And she had to have it explained to her by Naomi. Uh, remember, the, uh, but, but that would require and be a legal matter, forcing Boaz to make a decision. But here Boaz obviously wants to be Ruth's kinsman redeemer. Here all Ruth had to do was let Boaz know Ruth wanted Boaz as her kinsman redeemer. What could Boaz have said? Hey, uh-uh, get out from under my skirt. No, that's not what I'm off. No, but Ruth, Ruth, Ruth wasn't told no. We know Boaz loved Ruth, all right? Ruth goes down to the threshing floor and in this very quiet, modest way, let Boaz know she wants him as her kinsman redeemer. Verse 10, and he said, Blessed be thou of, of the Lord my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter in than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether rich or poor. I normally would break away from that, but I wrote something here I want us to read. Boaz immediately wants to claim her as his wife. How did I get that? Watch. Inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether rich or poor, poor. Boaz is saying, Wow, you had a choice. And you picked me. I would reckon he's in his 40s and maybe early 50s. I would reckon she's in her mid to late 20s. All right? She probably could have had a good looking woman that the Bible says she is. Probably could have had a pick of a bunch of men. And he could have had a pick of many a woman. But God had him wait for a reason. What a wonderful, warm experience it is to know that we have a Savior who died for us, who loves us, and lives for us today. All we have to do to be, uh, to be redeemed is go to the threshing room floor. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm using the, 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 the symbol of the threshing room floor as the throne of God. How do you get to the throne of God? Right here. Oh, right here. And you ask the Lord to forgive you. You get on your hands and knees. Lay down at night when you're talking to the Lord. I hope you do talk to Him at night. Whatever it takes. Talk to God. Ask God into your heart. Go to the threshing room floor. Repent. I, I, if I ever begged of anything, I want to beg this. Don't go to God with your wish list. Repent. Tell Him, Lord, I know what I've done wrong. You know what I've done wrong, but let me tell you. Let me tell you what I was thinking. Let me tell you what I thought and I said. Let, let, let me tell you the vileness of my real heart, Lord. He knows it already. But that's what we got to do first. In verse 11, and now my daughter, again, my daughter, a term of endearment, fear not. He, he could have said, now, now look, I, I appreciate this and everything, but uh-uh. But instead he says, fear not, my daughter. I will do to thee all thou requirest. 
all that the kinsman redeemers rules and that I'm supposed to follow, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take care of you. For all the city of the people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Everything that's been brought back to the public square. Everything that's been brought to the city gates where the elders are at. Everything that's been talked about since Ruth and Naomi have been there. You know what it's all been about? And that's a good woman. That's a caring woman. That's a sweet woman. That woman has taken care of Naomi. That woman has been grafted into our true living God. That's a, that, is a, that woman right there is an asset to our community. That's the stuff that was being brought back about Ruth. Not anything else. And again, I've said this before. Not the ways of the, of the Moabite woman. And all the women that are Moabites. Not the people that God called my wash pot. No. This woman here is a different woman. This woman's special. Isaiah 41 verse 10. I wish could be a favorite verse of all of ours. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you with my victorious right hand. Where'd that come from? That's the picture Boaz has given Ruth. But that's also the picture God gives us. In verse 11, uh, another virtuous woman. All the rumors were true. Uh, Ruth had a relationship with the true living God. And again, not once have we heard how Ruth was afraid. Ruth was more than a virtuous woman. She was strong. Ruth was fearless. Ruth was good and godly in all she did, including the proposal of marriage. In verse 12, And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. How bet there is a kinsman nearer than I. Boaz already knew one redeemer was in front of him. He did his homework already. Boaz was ready. When Ruth asked, But there is business at hand. Boaz must work on first. This other kinsman was probably Emlick's brother. First, I must see what he, this other kinsman, has in mind. Verse th and you know what? He's just laying the, the rules out. He's letting her know, I, I want you for my wife, but someone's in front of me. Now watch how it's put here in verse uh, 13. It says, Terry this night. You know what he just told her? Hang loose, stay here. <coughs> he didn't say come up here and smooch and kiss with me. And I'm being pretty open with you here. He says, stay here at my feet. And it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, if this other guy will do the will, will, will do the job, well, the Bible says, well, let him do the kinsman's part. <coughs> but if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of the kinsman to thee. As the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. So he's saying, I'm not swearing by the Lord, but as the Lord lives, I'm going to do my job. Hey, David. Yes. We see from that picture of Boaz and Ruth that Ruth made the, she, she, she went to him. The same way we go to Christ. He comes to us, but we go to him. And he expects us to go to him. But where does the, kids, where does the other redeemer fit into this picture? Did you, did you know? The, as far as our relationship who? with Christ and us coming to him. <laughs> Is that, does that involve us as Christians at all? Oh, absolutely. I, I, and, I, and that's a great question. I'll get to it, but I'm going okay. to tease you with this right here. He thought more of himself than what the Redeemer should be doing. He thought more of his inheritance. And I'll touch on that. All right. Boaz, uh, let me see here. Verse 13. Pretty simple. I will ask of him if he will perform his duty. That is okay. Let him do his part. But if not, I got this. I want to be your Redeemer. As the Lord liveth, this is a promise. Stay here until morning. Now, I ask, do you think Boaz's mind was racing on how he's going to handle this? Verse 14. And she lay at his feet until the morning. Once again, she lay at his feet. Amen. Oh, every woman in here should be going, yeah, that's a virtuous woman. She lay at his feet. And she rose up before one, uh, before one could know. So it's still dark, but she gets up. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came to the floor. Now, what, what he's doing there is he's protecting Ruth's reputation. He's also, I think, 
protecting the thought that if this other kinsman knows he's, he's in love with her and he's already got some plans, well, the other kinsman, he could pull a fast one. He could do some bargaining, something that didn't need to be done. But I think more he was interested in Ruth's reputation. So, say it again. Well, well, now watch. Okay. Okay. It's he and she and nobody else. Dawn comes. People are coming to the fields. She's getting up with straw on herself. She's getting herself cleaned up and walking out. What are people going to think? Now, down the road they may know, well, there was a proposal going on. But the Bible shows us that it was the act as it should be. And I think, I think Boaz was just, again, protecting her. Uh, in verse 15, and he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. I've seen this report being six ephels, uh, 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 which is uh, one by one, square. There's no way. It's too heavy, too much, and the thing would, would probably tear with that much weight. But whatever she was wearing as a scarf of some type, he filled it up. He filled it up for a mother-in-law gift. And I might also say, he probably gave her as much as she could carry. In verse 16, And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou? This is... This is more stuff that I, 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 I've had to read and understand. I've passed right by it when I've read it before. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? My Bible says question mark. Yeah, okay? And she told her all the men had done to her. So who art thou? Was it dark? Was it dark that Naomi couldn't recognize her own daughter-in-law? Why stop, why stop at the door? Why did or why would she need to knock? Was Naomi not sure who Ruth was? Maybe. Naomi was asking Ruth, is this Mrs. Boaz at my door or is it still just Ruth? We laugh at the remark, but I think Naomi knew it was, if Ruth followed the instructions she gave her, there will soon be a wedding. Okay? So maybe there was a little humor. Who is this? Is this the Mrs. Boaz or are you still Ruth? Did it not work? Okay? Verse 17. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go, not empty-handed, and to my mother-in-law. Naomi says, Don't worry, Ruth. I was right about this man. Now, now this is me surmising what Ruth is thinking and saying here in verse 18. Uh, I, I was right about this man. He'll, he'll be busy getting all his Redeemer stuff in order. Now, this now, the work of the redemption, is up to Boaz to complete. He will not sleep until all matters are settled. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 4610. But Jesus had already done the work of salvation for us. You know, go back to this, this, this thought. So, now, let's flip the deal and we're pre-crucifixion. Alright? We're waiting for Jesus. All through the Old Testament. Again, if you've read it, and I hope we have, and we can go over a lot of stuff, Jesus is coming. We get into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament, Jesus comes. Jesus walks on the earth for three and a half years, and he's crucified. All right? We were waiting. Boaz uh, is, has a job to do, and the Lord had a job to do. There, there was a long wait. There's no doubt about that. We tarry. Right now, I love that word. We wait right now. What do we wait for? We're waiting for the sign from the east. Remember that, okay? We wait for the sign from the east when Jesus will come and the word rapture will be used every day after that because they'll say, they was raptured out of here. And that's you and me that call on the Lord. And that will happen. And he'll come from the east. And there's more to that story. Uh, I am going to run to I'm still in 18 uh, Jesus our, is our redeemer you say how Jesus went to the cross and redeemed you and I 
with the death on the cross. You see, God required perfection to enter the Holy of Holies. We came up short. We are sinners. God gave His Son for you and I at Jesus' death. We are redeemed and made perfect in Christ. Payment is paid in full for my sins to God Himself. Hanging on the cross, Jesus said, It is finished. That's in John 19.30, another great verse. It is finished. Our redemption was complete. It's finished. We cannot help Jesus. It's like Ruth can't help Boaz. She's got to sit still and wait. His blood shed on the cross redeemed you and I, not by works, but by faith in Jesus Christ. That's what saves us. Now, all, everybody in here should say, you know, he's preaching to the choir. Amen. The choir should like it. <laughs> we do. Continuing at 18, Jesus stated, uh, started his ministry at about age 30. You see, I've already done this last week, and so all my mind's going 15 different ways, so sometimes I'm repeating myself. Jesus was early praying to his father, was up early praying to his father. Jesus was up all day healing and praying and teaching people. Jesus was busy getting ready and getting his disciples ready to watch Jesus redeem us. He slept very little. Matthew 9, verse 37. Then saith unto his disciples, The harvest is truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He's telling his men at the time, of the, back in Matthew, there's so many people that I want you to reach. We don't have a lot of people. And that's kind of how it's been throughout the ages. There's just enough of us just to com continue to sprinkle the word. But we need to just to pour it on the word. We need to live the word, love the word, guide people with God's word, and let the word of the Holy Spirit guide us in everything we do. But all the workers could not do the one thing only Jesus could do for us. I hope you'll understand about this redemption thing when I'm through here. Redeem you and I. That's what he went to the cross for. I hope we have explained why we need a redeemer. And the only reason God sent Jesus into this dark, ugly world was to die for you and I so we can have fellowship and a relationship with the one true living God. Okay? So that's how I end. That's how I end chapter 3. And uh, just to, after I read verse 18 and I went through some notes on 18, let's read for 18 again. Then she said, sit still, my daughter. We're talking about Dale. We're talking. Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. Well, that should give us, if we didn't know Boaz and Ruth, the picture, that should give us the picture of Jesus hanging on the cross. It's going to be finished this day. All right? All right. Chapter 4. Then Boaz went up to the gate and he sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spoke came by. Okay? So, obviously, Boaz is a city elder. I told you, you got a lage on him. Okay? You're not going to put no 25, 30-year-old man at the city gates as an elder. And... The other guy would be an elder also, if he is, especially Emlick's brother. And respected men came to the city gates. All right? Not necessarily wealthy men, but men of respect. He says, uh, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. I had to go through this so many times. Ho! <laughs> like you're riding a horse. Ho! He's telling the guy, it's a it's a term that they would say, say, dude, hold on a minute. Come over and talk to me a minute. I got a, got a little business proposition for you. That's kind of what I'm paraphrasing it for. City elders gathered at the city gate on a regular basis for settling disputes or just about any kind of matter that came up, including a redeemer situation that may arise. Let's go back to chapter one. Within the first five verses, we have three dead men and three widows. And the hardship that comes from those deaths. You know, it, it's ironic. Here we, we, have, we have a death in our church family today. You know, uh, how things work out, you know. Anyway, in Psalms 30 and 50, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That's a refreshing thought. But if you just went through a death, it doesn't help a lot. Now, you can be as close to God as anybody ever was, but your death still hurts, and the weeping may, may not end tonight. It may be next week or next year or a couple of years, but I promise you, for those in Christ, it will come back. The joy will come back. Now, we know that, again, I'm 
Now, now we know this is not always the way it goes because that joy may take a few years for some. But we always pray for those in Christ that they will find God's joy as soon as possible. Now that said, here we are planning on going to a wedding. So chapter 1, three deaths, three widows. Tough times for Naomi and the two daughters. All right? And one widow, joy, has come back. And soon she'll be a grandmother holding a baby boy to carry on her son's name. That's an amen. amen. One widow about to be married to a man God has waited on for his first real love. He's waiting on God for his first real love. And one widow we've heard no more of. You may think I don't enjoy putting these notes together. I love this stuff. Well, then I have some stuff that needs to be put together. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I get done, it doesn't look like a tornado been through there. <laughs> We're still in verse 1. The word redeemed means, hear the whole sentence, to be set free by paying a price. All right? I hope you see that picture. I just, back in verse 18 of chapter 3, by paying a price. As I mentioned earlier, at some point in time, Imlich's, Imlich's property had been sold and the rights had been passed on to Ruth's husband. Ruth was all that is left to his name. Okay? So, I said earlier, uh, why? I asked you all this question. I wanted you all to, to dwell on it. Why does she need a redeemer? Because that family has land. That family has property. And it's hers. But someone needs to go pop, buy it back for her. All right? Now, I already said Ruth wasn't husband hunting. But this man is capable of redeeming her. All right? They also need a Go to, excuse me, ma'am. Go to Mark 10, verse 45. Uh, Robert, go to John 8, verse 36. Yeah, real quick, please. Spiritual redemption is needed because all people are in bondage to sin and Satan and unable to set themselves free. You'll understand that? You can try all you want. She mentioned someone about is in some bad stuff right now. Okay? You can try with all the will you want. God can set you free. He can take the nicotine, the nicotine addiction away, the alcoholic addiction away, the drug addiction. Nobody else can. And, 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 and those few people that are able to kick it on their own, they're still dependent on something. Did you find Mark? Uh, okay, hold on. So, Jesus gave his life as a ransom for sinners. All right. In Mark 10, verse 45, I'm not going to chase it. Watch this verse. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for the Okay? And he came to serve, not be served, and he gave his life a ransom for many. Now, I always have looked at that verse, and I, we actually studied Mark here. And I, and I used to, I, I looked at that verse, and I used to say something like, uh, why didn't he give it for all? Well, he did, if they'll all accept. But only a few are going to accept. Uh, John 8. Here's another verse we should have just memorized. John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Free indeed. So, free from what? Well, in, in John 8, we're talking about free from the bondage of sin. And, and free, the freedom you have now is straight access to God through Jesus Christ. That's the freedom that we have now. Alright? And he did it to anybody that will call on the name of Jesus Christ. So, it says many. I wish it said all. A redeemer had to be a near kinsman to redeem. Now watch this. He had to be a near kinsman. Do you know why we tell the story? Do you know why we tell the story that Jesus Christ came and was born a virgin? And he lived here as a man for 30 years and three and a half years of a ministry after that. Do you know why we have to say that? Because of what we're talking about right now. Because for him, a kinsman redeemer to redeem, they got to be kin. they got to be blood. And that's what Jesus is to us. By becoming flesh, he's become blood to us. To every one of us. 
All right? A redeemer had to be near kinsman to redeem you. Just as Jesus had become flesh and blood. He did this just to die for us on the cross. So when Jesus was born in this world in human flesh, he became our kinsman redeemer. Now, on the cross, when he was crucified and he said, it is finished, he became our redeemer. All right? And Jesus will be our kinsman redeemer for all of eternity. <coughs> This Redeemer must have the resources to pay the price. Now, we're talking nuts and bolts here. Naomi and Ruth had no money. Nobody but Jesus had the blood and riches to redeem us because He gave Himself to us and purchased eternal redemption for us as the Son of God. And lastly, a Redeemer had to be a willing participant as a Redeemer. Jesus was, was willing to redeem us. God was willing to give His Son because of sin to be crucified. Boaz is willing to be Ruth's redeemer. But back to our text. Again, Boaz calls on the near kinsman. Ho, turn aside here. The 10, oh, uh, verse 2. Chapter 4, verse 2, Ruth. And he came and he took 10 and he, and he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. So there's a, there's a process going on here. I believe there's no question that Boaz has respect. He calls on this man. Turns aside and sits down with him. They're going to make a proposition. He calls on ten elders. Don't say a word, Mr. Emlick's brother or whoever you may be. The other kinsman. Hold on. Gets the ten witnesses. In verse 3, and he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again, she came back, out of the country of Moab, sell it the parcel of land. There you go. She had some land, and she had to sell it. And they probably sold it before they left. They were in a bad drought and a bad famine, which was our brother Emlix. So the land was her brother Emlix. So, so Boaz tells for all to hear, Naomi has come home, but their land from Emlech was sold. That tells the story of why I've called on you. Chapter uh, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. Now he's talking directly to the other possible kinsmen. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Simple English. Hey, there ain't nobody in front of you. You're the man if you want this responsibility. But if you don't, I'm willing to take it. Uh, Boaz is telling him it is available to redeem. Again, redeem it. Again, redeem it. Or I'm next to Kim. Uh, that's what I want you to know. Verse 5. Then Boaz said, What day? I think this guy is pretty, pretty, pretty crafty. Then, then Boaz said, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. See, he didn't just say, You, you need to buy it from, from Ruth also. He threw in the obligation. The obligation was to raise up a name so his name goes on in, in, in the land of Israel. So Boaz left this fellow out, uh, met this fellow in on the redemption of Naomi. Then he let the proverbial uh, shoe drop. By the way, the kicker thrown in is that wife of the dead goes along with all your stuff. Go, goes along and all your stuff. I wrote this note. Uh, first of all, I couldn't spell proverbial. I could call Sherry and I couldn't pronounce it four or five different times. And Siri couldn't understand how, what I was asking either. But anyway, we got it down. And then just now when I read it, well, how, how did I read it so easy after having all that trouble trying to put that word together? <coughs> Proverbial. Anyway, uh, but uh, so he's telling her, uh, tell, he's telling her, all your stuff will go to her family, that Moabite woman. Now, and the kinsman said, I mean, there's, there's no hesitating. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. 
Redeem thou my, my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now you see there? He doesn't want to redeem it because of what I said also. Because his inheritance is put in jeopardy. Now I'm going to give you a definition of mar. I thought, it's kind of a strange word. Again, it's in the King James, but it's not really a word uh, I, that I would use. Uh, oh, I didn't bring my other note. I'm sorry. I'll have to go off memory. Ah, I got one of them. So, the word mar literally means to scar, to ruin. That's the biggest part of that word. And, and, and you can just look and think of the other uh, words that go with it. But he's saying, if I redeem Ruth along with it, oh my gosh, I'm going to ruin my name. I'm going to ruin my stuff. My, my own sons, they're not going get to get, get their stuff because I'm bringing up this woman's own son. And that is the, that is the law. I have to do it. He didn't even think twice about it. Forget it. I love to own that piece of land. I love to help you with this Redeemer deal. I'm not going to do it. And so that left the door wide open for, for Boaz. All right? We're going to stop right there. That was perfect timing, Wendy. Wendy, aren't you happy with me? We'll see. Hi. You got one minute. <laughs> we'll start back up in verse 7. Uh, but look, I hope that answered your question. Purely. Purely. What if Jesus said, I don't want to hang on that cross. If I hang on that cross, guess what? I, uh, will, will I still sit at the right hand of God? I don't want to hurt my inheritance. No, he said the exact opposite. I give my all. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for uh, letting, letting me go back over chapter 3. Marge, you, you heard it. I, I cut all of it short. Did that? But uh, anyway, chapter 3 uh, was, was, was a great birth book. We're, we're going to be through next week. But there's some mighty interesting topics to go over uh, the, the genealogy that we're going to see here. Okay? I hope you all have enjoyed this study. I really do. Uh, I, I thought it was a woman study. That is not true. This is a great Bible study. So, anyway, uh, John, would you close us with a word of prayer? Sure. Father in heaven, we thank you for this message that you brought us through today tonight. We just ask that you would uh, help us remember as we go about our daily lives. We, we do thank you for all this time that we get to spend together. We thank you that we can assemble in your name. And we thank you that we have uh, this time of fellowship. We ask for your protection and guidance and direction and wisdom, and knowledge, and discernment, and understanding in the week ahead, the rest of the week, and, and through the weekend. And we just lift up those who have gone ahead of us. And, and, and we lift up their families to you. We, again, I want to lift up uh, Mary to you, especially, and also just the families of, of uh, those who have gone before us. We thank you so much for all your many blessings. Amen. 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 Okay, so read your Constitution and read your Bible. There's a lot of stuff that goes hand in hand. You'll enjoy it. What?